Hi, Enzo here. Welcome to my kitchen again. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make Welsh rare bit risotto. Uh, for this recipe, I do have uh, um, arborio rice, um, onions, uh, beer. I chose a, a pale ale beer um, to bring a lot of bitterness into it, but also to be nice and smooth. Uh, vintage cheddar, um, whole grain mustard, butter and uh, oil. As a start, I'm going to put um, butter into a, a hot fry pan. I'm choosing this fry pan because it's got a large surface area. So when I put my stock into it, which we're going to use for the risotto, it's going to uh, evaporate a little bit quicker than a normal pot. A bit of olive oil, just to uh, make sure that the butter doesn't burn out. And I'm going to put to a medium high flame to melt this down. Now I'm going to put my onions. We want to brown, golden brown the onions. A fresh bay leaf just taken out of my tree. Cracked pepper. And we're going to brown this off, very gentle. The onions are nice and blonde. They smell absolutely fantastic. I'm going to toast my rice, my arbor rice, into, into the butter, put the um, the flame a little bit lower so you don't toast, you don't burn basically the grains around. In the meantime, while our rice is nice and is toasting, we have some uh, beef stock going on here uh, with two uh, carrots. Uh, it smells mm, gorgeous. We need to have this nice and hot to put it in, into rice and to cook the rice. Now, this rice looks nice, it's toasting. Oh, smell those onions, They're absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, and we put up the flame again and we get this ready for the beer to go in. Now I have uh, 330 mils of beer. I'm thinking I'm going to use probably half bottle for all this risotto and here it goes. And high flame all the way down. We need to reduce this down. We start to add our stock in. Now this takes 20 minutes on a low moderate heat and just stir occasionally and make sure that all the grains are below the stock point. Okay, the risotto looks almost ready. Um, what we need to do is actually to add some other flavors that they're going to finish and cook. Um, what we need to add a little bit of more moisture, a bit of extra um, stock and the rest of the beer. So we put one beer between two risottos, hide up the flame, mix it all nice and gentle. And what we need also, um, two full spoon, uh, uh, teaspoons of whole grain mustard. And then we cook that down until the whole thing just disappears. In the meantime, what I have here is a, a fry pan, nice hot fry pan. And I'm going to uh, just stir fry very quickly, very gentle, these uh, beautiful uh, trust uh, tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, with um, some bay leaves and Worcestershire sauce and uh, yeah. olive oil. The risotto is almost ready to have the cheese inside. That's where I crank my heat. So our risotto, it's almost ready. Mm. Yes, it is. So time to put my vintage cheddar into it. And that's enough. And the extra butter right on the end. So take the spoon out. Just toss it and ready to serve.
just right on top of it. Welsh rare bit risotto with my compliments. We're at Buckley's in Healesville, out in the Yarra Valley. This brewery was established by five fools back in 2000. I know that because I was one of them. We sold the brewery to, in 2006 to our longtime distributor, John O'Callaghan. Let's go and see what he's doing. John, after you purchased the brewery outright in 2006, you had a couple of problem beers in the first half of 2007. So what did you do about it? Well, we had to look at our yeast. We went and bought a microscope and uh, checked our yeast viability. And uh, we were able to then make a decision uh, to condition in the bottle rather than the, the vat, particularly the dark beer, the dark bock. Um, so, uh, with another couple of small procedure changes, we had it licked. We, we, we've got it now in control. That's very interesting. I love those things. Tell me, how much did the microscope cost you? Well, it was a good, reasonable, a reasonable price. Very uh, 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 accessible at $400. Oh, yeah. And uh, that enabled me to uh, get the magnification I needed to look at the viability of the cells. This is a very green brewery. Can you tell our viewers about your use of solar energy? Well, we're using solar energy uh, to, as my son uh, would say, saving the world one brew at a time. He, he saw the extremes of pollution in, in Germany when he was over there for seven years and decided that he'd uh, come and help me and uh, inspired me to put uh, solar panels on the roof, uh, which uh, raises our ambient temperature for our brew uh, approximately uh, 60 degrees in, in um, in summer and uh, 50 degrees in winter. You make four beers and I know you're experimenting with a fifth. Can you tell us about them? Well, we make the two ales and the two lagers. We're uh, uh, fairly unique in that uh, the lagers we make uh, are full bodied, full flavoured. None of the beers are for wimps. Uh, the dark bock we make uh, is, has all the ingredients uh, of, a, of a stout, but because we make it as a lager, not an ale, it's, it's a European style dark bock. Uh, the other lager is a Pilsner style lager, but uh, that's where we uh, tend to come away from the standard uh, uh, style because it's very full bodied, full flavoured beer. Uh, we find it's good for summer because of the uh, uh, hops ratio. Um, the ales we make, uh, original ale, which is based on the IPA, um, and the uh, bitter ale, which is based on the European style uh, ale with uh, a, a funky group of hops that, that give us some nice characters. What was the beer that inspired you? Well, apart from the beer from Buckley's, the, 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 the beer that I, I really liked was, was a red oak beer, yeah. uh, brewed for 12 months in barrel, and uh, it's the flavours that came through from that uh, vanilla uh, character from the oak was, was amazing. It was like a liqueur musket, but with a, 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 a different complexity. Uh, really inspiring. Another beer that I, I felt was, was, was well made was the um, Premier's uh, Grand Champion uh, beer for in the International Beer Awards, made under licence in Australia uh, by CUB as a cellar artois. So I, I like the, the, the flavour that came as a f freshly uh, drafted beer fr from the tap. Yep. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that's been my, my okay. major okay. data. John, thanks for your time. It's good to see you again. You too, Gage. Welcome back to the Keg Room. 
And now we're going to have a look at an American, American style pale ale. This is the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale from California. Which is in America. <laughs> this brewery was started by two home brewers in 1979. Yes, two home brewers. And they employed a brewer in 1983 who's still in charge of making the beer. When he started, they were doing 20 barrels a week. They now do 700,000 barrels a year. Yeah. So this is where your home brewing can lead to. Why this beer is so important is the first beer they made was this pale ale style. And a bit like um, Little Creatures in West Australia, how they've influenced Australian brewing with their pale ale, Sierra Nevada is also a high influencer for the American microbrewing revolution over the last 25 years. So Robert, what do you think? Well, this is a pretty good beer, I think. Um, it's, it's got that caramelly, slightly citrusy nose to it. It's uh, quite bitter, but not, not overly bitter. It's slightly dusty in, in taste, and it, uh, to my mind, it could possibly be a little, little more body to it. But, but it's a pretty good beer. I think it's, they claim uh, all natural, purest ingredients, highest quality, all that sort of stuff. And I think it probably lives up to that. I'd give it a three and a half stars. Well, Robert, I'm going to go the same with your three and a half stars, but um, because the real plus with this beer is how integrated. So it is a hoppy style beer, but the hops and malt beautifully integrated. It's got a slight drying, powdery, tannin sensation inside yeah, of my cheeks. Not course. unpleasant, but just a little different. So if I say this is three and a half stars, I said the Boat Rock is three and a half stars. So I'm saying... Leaving aside legendary beers, I think that the local beer, the Boat Rocker, is as good as the Sierra Nevada. Yeah, if not better, I think, myself. Well, anyway, that's all for this week. Thank you very much for watching. And if you've got a beer you'd like us to have a look at, let us know. Contact the website. That's thebeerfrontier.com.au. And next week, we'll be looking at Imperial Stout. So thank you very much for watching and good night. Thank you for watching and good night.